This Keegan reading, um, pages 1 through 25, from his book, In Over Our Heads, we're kind of introduced to this scenario of this teenager, Maddie, and his parents wondering where he is, why, why he isn't home yet, and, and kind of the bigger question, or the bigger idea, not, not simply that he's going to be penalized for, for not following the rules, but this desire from his parents that they want him to truly desire or to truly understand um, why they why he should be home and why he should think that think their way. So we, Maddie, this character of Maddie kind of asks the question, "What do you want from me?" And this is a question that many adolescents or adolescents um, ask. You know, what is it that that society and and these people want from me and what is it that I'm expected to do and fulfill um, we see that they don't just want him Maddie and, and and other teenagers home at a decent hour but they in fact want them to um, feel bad about coming home because they because these teenagers truly understand uh, the purpose and the value of a curfew they understand the core purpose and the absolute um, logic behind why his parents need this peace of mind and why he needs to act this way. His parents in society want him, they want to know that Maddie's mind has changed, that his whole logic is different than that of another teenager, than of a normal one. They, um, that he actually truly cares and actually knows these things. They, they want and expect that he will know reasonable from foolish decisions and how to decipher and how to assess these things. Different adults and authorities, are, of course, are going to have these different expectations for what responsibilities are expected and, and different responses from Maddie because they themselves will have different perceptions of what is respectable and what is valuable. And so that's something that's very subjective in, you know, what do you want from me, that question. But on, you know, on the whole, it all boils down to they this desire for adolescents to you know truly know and to truly feel why exactly um, society expects certain things of them these concerns uh, that adults and authority figures have while they are concerned about you know Maddie's well-being and success they are mostly concerns for ourself all of us you know as as uh, I guess if I was to put myself in the place of an adult looking down onto an adolescent or a teenager um, we do want them to be successful and happy but we also want to know some things for ourselves. we want to be confident um, that we are safe that he is contributing to the society that we also are in and that in the case of like a social emergency that we can truly rely on his abilities if we don't have confidence in, in knowing or thinking that these adolescents don't truly know these things and don't truly believe them, but that they're just adopting them out of kind of a sense of uh, of duty. Then we can't have this confidence, and we can't we can't think that our society will be held together by you know a sense of duty. So how does Maddie come to know and feel these things? How does he come to learn these things? And how do we teach adolescents to truly desire these things? Um, that comes from our our ability and our, our learning curve when we are growing up, and we learn about this mental set or a durable or Keegan calls it a durable category. These sets contain and are made up of the knowledge based of our based off our experiences as ch young children about how we relate to the forces and influences around us. We all began outgrowing the kind of self-absorbed toddler um, mentality as far as you know this affects affects me this way and this is how I feel about it and it doesn't matter what you know what other people are thinking or feeling we become more able to categorize the things that we want and the priorities in our lives and and our and we prioritize our efforts you know uh, seeing one one thing or one one goal is more important than the other. Not all on the same playing playing field. And we realize that uh, that we don't have to generalize 
our, our feelings, you know, just because someone shows up late and it affects us, that doesn't make them an inherently bad person. Um, this idea that our self is fostered um, by our preferences and our habits and our abilities, and this all fits into our opinion about ourself. All of these processes show that we have this ability to order things, order the things that make up our experience or our life. So, uh, Maddie and, and adolescents all over have the ability to create their own concrete expectations and categories of logic, but we expect them to also adopt and to understand and care for our categories, our personal expectations and order of minds. Um, and I think this is where a lot of teenagers and adolescents fall short. Um, how Maddie knows these things is integral in his parents' peace of mind, you know, how he began, how he truly did adopt these things. And this is all coming from um, his, his upbringing and his, his self-realizations. So to achieve this, Maddie has learned or needs to learn to more than understand his own durable categories and the durable categories of his parents, but he needs to cross-categorically know. And that, that means that he needs to not only care about what his, what his parents are going to want, but when he's making those decisions based off of that, know how his decision will affect his relationship with his parents. And that's where the article left off.